Hey there, ladies and gents, it's your favorite Asian robot right here, and today I'm gonna show you the ultimate beginner's guide for Synced. All right, I was gonna do a movie event uh, guide today, but I decided to move that tomorrow because today on stream we've had a lot of new people coming in and people who are just starting out the game. I figure they could use a beginner's guide to teach you how to do everything in Synced. So let's go through this together, and I'm gonna show you all the little steps that you need in order to get good at synced okay let's begin together starting out first when you first get into synced what you need to realize is that you have three weapons take your time okay you have a secondary weapon your pistol which has its own unique build by the way for early game um and you will start out with the whisperer this is actually still one of the best pistols in the game the whisperer can only be equipped with a suppressor which is mostly used in PvP for uh, silenced attacks. It is not really used in PvE, all right? Um, you can change the skins and the weapon decals, but realistically speaking, uh, the secondary pistol has no real levels and no real... Like, the more levels you get, the more you can change the skin. That That's that's all you can really do. But it doesn't upgrade it in any way. This is a bit, of di this is a bit different to the primary weapon, where if you're starting out with a primary weapon, say the future, right? You can, as you go up in level, customize it with different kinds of muzzles, sights, magazines, all that kind of stuff. All right, depends on what you want to use. And of course, you also unlock skins for each weapon as you go. This is how the game works in general. Your melee weapon, okay, follows the same principle as your secondary weapon. And in terms of the melee weapon, there are three classes. The fastest class are the dual wielded weapons, which have a higher attack rate, lower damage dealt, and lower nano damage compared to the standard weapons. Standard weapons are like the katana, everything like that. Then there are the heavy weapons, which have a slower attack rate, but increased damage dealt and damage to nanos. All right? So if you want to go heavy, you can. If you want to go katana, you can. If you want to go fast, you can. It depends on what you want to achieve in the game. Okay? All right. Now that you understand the basics of your weapons, all you really have to do is pick your weapon and go. You will most likely start out with the future, but there are several other weapon choices. SMG is one category, shotguns is one category, LMGs are one category, and last but not least, sniper rifles are one category. Okay? Pick whatever you feel works for you. That being said, there is also a difference between gun tech and normal weapons. I will go Tell through that later. All right? In terms of the basics of the game, once you understand the fact that you've got three weapons, all right, you won't be able to change your runner at first. You'll be starting out with dead cut during the tutorial, all right? the ticket, take but later on you can unlock and change your runners freely at any point in time, not during the mission, but before any mission. Each runner comes with their own perks as well as runner skills. I'll leave you to discover this for yourself, all right? but do take a read of each of them and then you can understand it better. You can even view their skills, all right, in a nice little demonstration. That'll show you how it works. Okay. Now, after you've picked your runner, you will also be able to pick your nano. This is another feature that you will learn later on. There are four types of nanos in general, and each of these nanos comes with their own abilities and style of play. The Crusher is one of my favorites. Why? Because the Crusher is a tank and a melee damage dealer all in one. It is very good at taunting enemies, it has some of the highest hit points in the game, and it is generally a hardcore melee, offensive melee attacker. All right, that is what I'll say about the Crusher. The Suppressor is the high-powered ranged DPS. It absolutely shreds enemies with powerful, consistent shots, all right. And if you lock onto a target, it will attack with long range shot blast, shock blast projectiles. Extremely powerful, but it has its own limitations. Okay, whoops, sorry. Didn't mean to do that. The Guardian, the Guardian is one where it can shield you by forming a shield at a target position. It can act as a shield when it's on your arm. Ah, that's right. I forgot to mention. Each nano has a different power when it is on your arm, okay? Some nanos, 
some nanos will offer different abilities based on whether they're on your arm or deployed, okay? So for the Crusher, the Crusher is just straight pure offense, all right? And it will, when on your arm, increase your movement speed as well as your melee attack speed. The Suppressor will allow you to ADS faster and reduce your crosshair spread when it's on your arm, but when deployed, it will unleash powerful projectiles at the enemy. It basically has a big, massive cannon for an arm. Okay, you can see that right there. The Guardian is a shield. We call it Captain America. Basically, it can deploy a shield, which you can use as a barrier. You and your team can use as a barrier. It will form a shield in front of you if it's on your arm, and its health will take damage first before you if the shield is struck. So you can use that in emergency situations if you need additional defense, and it can even attack enemies. However, keep in mind that its attacks are designed mostly to suppress and knock back enemies, not really to deal damage. Okay, so the Guardian doesn't really do all that much damage, but there are specific stages where it is very helpful because it can knock enemies back. Last but not least is the Seer. The Seer can detect rival runners while in nano arm mode. All right, so when it's on your arm, it's mostly used in PvP where it can detect enemy runners. That being said, you can also deploy it at a distance to scan for enemy runners, okay? But it will not actually, although it says creates a pack nano decoy, it doesn't actually act as a real decoy. It will not draw enemy fire or attacks. And last but not least, it's got a lock-on laser beam when in attack mode, where it'll fly around the target and hit them with some lasers that can dish out some decent critical damage. That said, all right, I should probably tell you that it is also the only nano in the game that can deal an affliction, i.e. the poison affliction, which you will get through mods, and its lasers become poison lasers that can be really helpful in some higher level stages. Okay, so now that you understand that about the nanos and the four types of nanos, let's get into the game. How are you supposed to play this game? Well, I'm not actually going to show you any matches because these you probably hey have seen Rambler. on stream. If you rambling. haven't, check out my streams. But I'm just going to explain the progression for PvE. PvP kind of is just one single today? thing. Nerva Run. Your power is normalized. It means that no matter what kind of power level you have, okay, you're just going to get, you're just going to have the normal power level whenever you go in. You can get a variety of rewards, okay, in the Nerva Runs if you'd like to play PvP, but more or less, uh, PvP is a for fun mode, all right? There are good rewards, don't get me wrong, but it's mostly a for fun mode that people go in when they wanna, when they get bored of the main game. The main core of the game is PvE, all right? And where you're gonna start out is here. You're gonna start out at Core Ops. Okay, and at this point in time, I'm going to remove my camera while I do this explanation. But at this point in time, the only thing you need to worry about is progressing. Okay, starting from Erosion Labyrinth, which is the third core op, you'll start to see a recommended power. My recommendation as you're going through this, whether you play solo or team, is to, before moving on to the next, try and reach the highest possible power as close to the upper band as possible. Basically, as you go through this, you will start to get mods. Mods will increase your power. The more power that you have, kind of like your light level in Destiny, you will deal more damage and enemies will deal less damage to you. All right, this power level helps you scale. And it also affects the offline rewards you get. Guess what? You get AFK rewards in this game. All right, they are very small though. You get more by actually playing the game. But you do actually get rewards while you're offline that you can collect daily as long as you log in. All right, so make sure you do that. Now, keep in mind this recommended power and follow along. Basically, from here, I would get to... Now, if you feel the game is too easy, then by all means, hop to the next level whenever you're ready. Even if you're underleveled, it's okay to move on. I was basically, I think, roughly 600 power level when I moved on to the next. Then I would keep moving on to the next. You have to keep going at first because you're only going to get gray mods. So gray mods are the weakest in the game. They cannot be upgraded. So whatever you get, you get. Just keep rolling with that. Just keep picking up the mods as you go. Okay. Until you start to earn blue mods. Blue mods still cannot be upgraded, but they are stronger than gray mods and they will form the core of your build. 
Now, I'm going to explain this to you very clearly, but blue mods still aren't really what you need for builds, okay? So don't worry and just keep putting on the highest power stuff that you have possible all the way until you get to Core Ops 10. Once you finish this, make sure you are a minimum of 4,000 power before progressing on. I cannot stress this enough. If you go into the next area without at least 4,000 power, you are going to have a bad time. Why? Because starting here, it's not just the surge you have to worry about. You're going to have to start worrying about timers. Okay? Going into Master Ops, the first Master Ops, the Catacomb Crawl, doesn't have a timer. Like, the timer is not a big issue. Once you start on Surface Strike, it's going to start being an issue. But once you get into Surface Strike, this is when you first start encountering purple mods. Purple mods are super important. Why? Because purple mods can be upgraded. Once you get to the purple stage, you will get something called Power Up. Power Up is different from Augment. Now, this will be explained to you in the game. But let's say I take this mod, I can replace it with a higher level mod and the power level will change over. Let's just sacrifice a mod just to demonstrate this principle to you. As you can see, the power level went from 847 to 850, okay? So your power level will go up in that way. Purple mods are where you start to really do your builds. And that's why I'm going to talk about the basic beginner builds at the end of this video. To explain to you guys how we do your basic builds. Now, many people have asked me, As well, what is the best poison. basic build in the game? I'm going to explain to you that there really isn't one. Uh, to be fair, when I, when I cleared all this, it was so easy that I just did it as fast as I possibly can. But what you will want to do is you want to hang around at each level for a certain duration of time until you at least get close to the final bit of recommended power. Like here, you don't want to really move on until you're about 6.2k. Then you move on and you just keep going like that. That is basically how this works. If you still find the next one too hard, get to the maximum possible power level. Each of these runs will have a cap. Once you hit that cap, you will no longer go up in power level no matter how many times you do that run. Just so you know. Alright? You can also farm gun tech, okay, which is used to upgrade your gun tech weapons. I'll go into that separately, alright, from Tyrant Blitz. This remains one of the fastest ways to farm gun tech in the game, alright? If you want to power up your weapons, this is the way to do it. Okay, through your gun tech blueprints. However, it is still pretty. Um, well, let's 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 just put it this way. Um, it can still be time consuming. Okay, so you may not want to just focus on that. However, certain gun tech, certain runs, right, can give you very specific gun techs. If you need to get some of these, all right. Guess what? They drop here. All right, so you can go through this and get the gun tech blueprints as you go. Tyrant Blitz remains the best option if you want to get gun techs without playing the automat. Now, what is the hey, automat? Don't be a stranger. Okay, what is the automat? While you're going through all these master ops and runs, there is a paid well, feature well. that turned off a lot of people on this game, but I'm going to explain to you that it is pretty good. It is called the automat. The automat is where you spend automat coins, and I've gotten 130 completely free to play. I haven't spent a cent on this game. I've got several legendary weapons, but where you get your legendary weapons is mostly here. This is where you start getting your automat rewards. So keep drawing and you'll get a random gun tech, random weapons, things like that. And bada bing bada boom, you'll be able to get what you need in exchange for coins. However, it's also RNG based. All right. What are these gun techs? These gun What's techs good? are advanced weapons of advanced versions, sorry, of guns that have special abilities. For example, the critic is basically this uh, space cadet, all right, assault rifle. The critic is a special version of that that fires six shot bursts with increased critical chance. If you get enough blueprints to max this out, and it takes uh, 60 blueprints in total, the first 10 to create the weapon, 10 to upgrade it to tier 1, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, you will upgrade its base bonuses. So now this thing starts out with a 10% critical chance. It now has 30% critical chance, 75% increased critical damage, and 40% overall range damage. You can also upgrade it with gun tech chips to upgrade along the outer ring, and this will give you a smaller bonus, but still very useful. You need to upgrade both in order to maximize your weapons. This takes a lot of Nerva and chips. You know where to find so be careful about what you're upgrading, all right?
Hey there, now, Rambler. Let's get now that you understand all of that and the automat and all of this stuff, what are the beginner builds? This is the last we part of the video, guys, so don't worry. Must you know, moving on from this, you guys can go into the game and just play. But what are the most basic builds in the game? Okay, I'm going to teach you two builds that I used when I was still a noob at this game so that you guys can understand how to use them and why we use them. All right. First and foremost, if you guys really want to get good at this game, here is a build with a balanced offense and defense that I used to use when I was still new to this game. The first is Second Wind. This is available as both a blue mod, okay, and a purple mod. All purple mods are available as blue as well, but obviously you want purple because purple, as you can see, um, the purple version has 30% healing speed and armor recovery. The blue version has 20% and the gold version has 40%. This is one of the easiest basic mods that you can use at the purple level in port 1. Each port has a specific number of mods attached to it that you can change. So you cannot move something from port 2 into port 1. It doesn't work that way. Okay? So each slot has a variety of mods that only suit that particular slot. Now, there are a variety of other mods that you could put in in place of Second Wind. But the reason why I find Second Wind so useful is because it is just good in general and depend and it works with almost any weapon any runner you don't have to worry about anything else all right there is another mod that you can use like reload to unload which will up your damage or um help me help you which will basically improve your prime nanos if you find that this is useful but i found that without much healing in the early stages of the game second win was basically my saving grace okay PvE port 2 and port 3 are generally used for offensive mods. What I really liked when I first started out was Explosive Ricochet, where kill shots can ricochet between nanos, but armor might be a problem for you guys. So if you guys find that you're struggling with nanos having a lot of armor and they're so tanky, get Armor Breaker. It's so easy to get and it's so useful. It only has a 25% trigger chance, but energy rounds, will, which will fire off um, whenever you ADS, right? You'll see this little thing charging beside you and then it'll throw that little rock at the enemy. This is just so good for actually breaking through nano armor. Next, energy round affliction will trigger an afflicting wave. It is an AoE wave that deals shockwave damage to nanos around the target hit. Again, it's got a trigger rate of only 40%, but it is still very useful. Alternatively, you can use explosive ricochet and then here you can go with headhunter. This is a mod I still use because I haven't gotten the gold version of this, but Headhunter is extremely powerful. Why? All you have to do is use your skill three times during the run. All right. During like, for example, each round counts as one run, right? During the run, you use it three times. You get a buff of 45% weak spot damage. That is the damage to the critical locations on the nano. You get that constantly and that's it. So it's one of the most useful mods. Add to that explosive ricochet. And when you kill the trash mob nanos, you will basically burst down other trash mob nanos, create lots of explosions. Then you take out the prime by hitting its uh, weak spot. Okay, you take out the bigger nanos by hitting their weak spot. Last but not least is kinetic armor. This is a must have for newer players. Why? Kinetic armor is so incredibly powerful because nearby nanos will have their armor broken whenever you deal damage to other nanos. Okay, this is so, so good. However, there is an alternative. If you find that you don't have enough defense to survive, okay, you're struggling with it, get Armor Transfer. Armor Transfer is exceptional for newer players. Armor Transfer will literally allow you to, when you break a Nano's armor, you will fully replenish your own. And the trigger rate is 80%. It's very easy to trigger. Okay, and your max armor, your overall max armor increases by 50%. Even now, in some of the master builds, I'm still using the gold version of armor transfer. It is so good. If you need extra defense, this is your saving grace. Okay? Um, and if you find during runs that you can get enough med kits to heal and you don't want second wind, I highly recommend Help Me Help You. Don't underestimate how much damage your nanos can do. Okay, Help Me Help You is available as a purple. You can also go for Reload to Unload if you want more personal damage in terms of critical damage. And um, the other option that I can recommend is this one, Making Lemonade. It can be very useful if you're a heavy ability user. 
but it's genuinely up to you. I don't really use armor ricochet, okay? Because it only has a chance of breaking armor and it's not that useful, okay? Um, next, I'm going to show you an alternative build that is very weird, but it does work really well, especially if you're going to use dead cut or glory, okay? This build is very, very odd, but it can work. And I have tested it and it actually does work, okay? It's a bit stupid, but bear with me. You can use Gunslinger in your first slot. Now, this, this build uses the pistol exclusively, okay? Gunslinger in your first slot. Then you want um, the Pistol Splitter for your AoE. This will help you deal area of effect damage. Why? When you fire your sidearm at nanos within 15 meters, the bullets will have a chance to split and deal multiple blows. It is so good for AoE. It increases your base pistol damage, all right? And has an 80% trigger rate. Your base one, okay, just, just bear with me. Your base one gives you 75% more pistol damage. This is giving you another 40%. Your pistol just doubled in damage. And guess what? You can upgrade the pistols during your runs as well. Next, in your third slot, okay, this is where it gets funky fresh. Here, if you want, if you want, I highly, highly recommend this, okay? If you want to, go and get Reload Blast, especially if you're using a pistol. Whenever you reload your pistol... Okay, because of your higher reload speed, you can reload really easily and you will drop two explosives whenever you reload. All right, this gives you additional AoE. Uh, if you choose not to have that, you can go with Restore Some Health on Critical Hit or Armed Robbery. If you really need additional med kits or you find your healing is not enough, this is your sustain right here, Armed Robbery. The other thing is that a lot of people like Regenerative Strength for this build. It will make you immune to the first time you're hit after your armor has regenerated but it's on a 30 second cooldown, so don't rely on it, all right? But some people do like using it. I'm just gonna be very frank with that. It does potentially work. It's up to you if you wanna use it, but that is one of the options that you can have, okay? Um, there are other options like break armor when you apply any affliction to nano, but this one is specific only to dead cut because the last bullet in his magazine will deal a fire affliction. So use that with this and you can instantly break armor with a pistol. I, I use this with the Sophisticant, and it is hilarious, all right? So I'm teaching you this really weird pistol build because it is absolutely funny. Now, the last thing that you're going to need, all right, to make your game go faster, and this one is even funnier, all right? Um, if you're going pistol build, I highly recommend you get Steady Shot. What does this weird thing do? Basically, after you hit Nanos with your sidearm twice in a row, you will fire two bullets at once for a short while. This allows you to empty your clip faster and the second bullet will have like minus 40% damage. But your pistol damage goes up by 40% overall again. So you will hit harder and split your bullets more. If you really want to run a pistol build, you can do that with this, with Dead Cut. And like if you want to run it with Doc, Doc is one of the most popular, right? I'll show you Doc's pistol build. This is a great beginner pistol build with the Doc. Gunslinger, Pistol Splitter, Reload Blast, and Steady Shot. It is absolutely hilarious to run this build with the Doc because he has his own sustain in terms of uh, his ability where he can drop a healer's uh, drone to res himself and everything like that. All right. And this brings us to the end of the Beginner's Guide for Synced. You guys understand the basics of all this. You guys understand how all this works. Let me just show you Welcome a hilariously kind of fast demonstration of Tyrant Blitz. Now, even now, even if you're like super overpowered, you can still go into like um, show three these things. But I just wanted to show you, you know, just give you guys a little bit of action at the end of this. I'm going to show you how fast, all right, the pistol build can kill. Now, of course, I'm way overpowered, but it's just so hilarious seeing the pistol when it's gray absolutely shred everything all right this is this is one of the reasons why i absolutely love doing this it is hilarious okay i cannot stress that enough it is hilarious and country but mostly for nerva okay equip pistol right and you can upgrade your pistol fyi in tyrant blitz you can upgrade your pistol to gold all right we'll grab armor we'll go in with no no mods or anything because why why bother all right and I'm just going to show you how this works. It's freaking hilarious. Tyrant Blitz, first one's Eroder. Good lord, stinks worse than smelling salts. Mm. 
You will empty your clip in seconds and just start dropping explosives. Look at that. You will literally empty your clip in seconds. It's so funny. Now, I don't recommend, obviously, using this consistently. Now, there's also a maximum scaling, by the way. So even if you're, like, 11,000 power, it's not going to matter because if you hit the maximum scaling, um, you're still going to be doing low damage like this. Like, you won't hit any harder or any faster. But because of the pistol splitter, like, emptying guns so fast, right? Uh, most people use the Whisperer instead of the Sophisticant. But I like the Sophisticant anyway because I just want to drop bombs on the enemy. All right? It's like that. Near pistol has unlimited ammo anyway, so you know, just uh just keep going with it. And send those bombs out at your enemy. <laughs> and that's that that's just how it works. This is how funny it is. Alright, so if you guys decide to, you can run the pistol build. It's it's wild, but you never have to worry about ammo. Um I did actually use the pistol build with dead cut several times, and it just resulted in hilarious runs. Like I said, very possible to win, but it's it just gets hilarious. All right, now once again, just for just for fun, we're just gonna go Dr. in with no mods, okay? And don't worry, I won't. I'll finish the recording before we go to the last one, but you know, I figured you guys would like to see this. Bring up the fire hose. Just because it's funny. This is literally it. This is literally it. Again, the, though, this is why we, most people... You see, that's the that's the split shot. It's so freaking funny. Try best not to die, though. Okay. Oh, for this one, I'm also not using my nano. I really should, but um, I figured it would just make this fast a bit too, a bit too wonky donkey. Okay, skip that. Roll, roll, roll your boat gently down the stream. Merrily, 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 life's but a dream. There you go. And because your reload is so fast, you just keep endlessly dropping bombs on him. See? Your magazine will just continuously give him some bouncy explosion steal. And it's so good for AoE as well. So although it's it's a bit wild as a as a build, it, it really does work. And like I said, it's one of the most hilarious ways of playing the game. Let's pick up your stuff and go. Yeah? Alright. That is it, ladies and gents. Thank you very much for watching this video. I hope this beginner's guide to Synced was helpful to you guys. I hope it'll help you guys enjoy the game even more thank you so much and now you know i'm just gonna give my thanks to all of our top people that make content like this possible let me go thank the following individuals uh, what's going on here I don't know why this wasn't listed on my channel, but anyway, um, starting right at the top, I'm going to thank the following individuals. Our top tipper is Big Chungus. Top tipper list goes to Bravo and Tarko. Top super chatter, Alien Frost 80 and Mr. T. They're tied. Top super chatter list, Holodaki, King Anubis, Nightshade, River Archer 124. And top channel membership gifter is Nightshade. Last but not least, if I'm going to also thank our top channel members. If you guys want to support my content, you guys want to see more from me, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Don't forget to get yourself a membership. You can send super thanks, super chats. The more love you show me, the more content I can make. So thank you very much if you decide to do that. Uh, starting right at the tippy top, we have Deftoni982 at Plus Ultra. We've got Jerry Fast, Rogue Assassin, Zack, and FGS Prestige. Thank you guys so much. In terms of our honored robots, we have Corey Ryu, Kashiwa, Bob John, Cube, Devin Lashin, Muki Mocha, Rena, Chase Taylor, Nathan Strong, Nightshade, Lady Neo, Joey Danze, Syed Asad, Kota CMF. Kami SMH, Conrad C, and Benjamin Savage. Thank you guys so much for supporting me. I'm going to see you guys on the next one, okay? Y'all stay sexy. Bye-bye.